Hey, what's up, guys? It's XX Modern Warfare, Game of Tab Banjo Chicken, and today we're looking at how to install the emulators, the PlayStation 1 emulator and the Nintendo 64 emulator. Uh, they run off Zell, so they're a bit buggy. Uh, PlayStation 1 emulator is very buggy, and um, the Nintendo 64 one's very stable, actually. It seems to play any Nintendo 64 game or ROM. And uh, yeah, so that's all good, but I must recommend do not use the one that I put in my. Uh, video on the emulator, the one that was both emulators combined into one. Don't use that because if you're using the PlayStation 1 emulator on that, it doesn't work as well as it would do if it was standalone on it, if it was just on its own. So um, definitely don't use that emulator, but use the use the, use them separately. Do not use the one that combines both of them. Uh, so yeah, I'll put the downloads to the PlayStation 1 emulator and the Nintendo 64 one in the description of this video. And um, yeah, today we're going to be looking at the PlayStation 1 emulator, but believe, believe me, it's exactly the same for the Nintendo 64 one. So don't worry about that, it'll be exactly the same how to install them. So first of all, you're going to want to get an external device like an external hard drive or a USB. Never try and run the emulator off the uh, FATX hard drive, which is the hard drive that's built into your Xbox, or the one that's on top of your Xbox if you have a fat Xbox. Uh, you want a removable drive, like a USB, one that is FAT32 format, you see down here in the, the left where details is. I'm on my USB drive at the moment, it's got nothing on it, and it's FAT32. If you have an external hard drive which is also FAT32, then that'll work fine as well. Uh, so first of all you want to go and get the emulator, you can get it off this website, the download will be in the description. If you just scroll down to the bottom, you want to download this one, uh, 0.62, I think that's the newest version. And once you've downloaded it, you'll get this RAR, WinRAR archive. Uh, just extract it, if you don't have WinRAR, download it, it's a quick Google search. Um, what people make mistakes of usually doing is copying this folder into your USB. You don't do that, you open the folder first and then you extract all of these files directly into the root of the USB drive. Never put any of these files or folders inside another folder. Um, they need to be in the root of your USB drive, especially this file, xenon.elf, must be in the root of your external device. Okay, so once you have them in the root of your device, all you really need now is a game or a ROM, as it's known as, I believe. Uh, so go on to your internet browser, and the best place to get them, I'll put a link in the description for this as well, is coolroms.com. It changes to .co.uk for me because I live in the UK, but hopefully the, the website will look the same for anyone who is not in the United Kingdom. But um, yeah, anyway, go to cool, coolroms.com or .co.uk, depending where you live, and um, slash roms. And then choose your ROM. So if you've got a, a doc, choose your game platform, is it? Did I say that right? Uh, choose whether it's Nintendo 64 or Sony PlayStation, since I'm my examples on the PlayStation, so I use PlayStation. So it gives you all these games to choose from. So say you want Crash Bandicoot, you click C and then scroll down till you find there it is Crash Bandicoot. And you've got all that. All those games. So click one, download it, uh, and then once you've downloaded it. I've got one here. This I wouldn't recommend this game. This is Spiral 3 Year of the Dragon. It doesn't tend to work properly on the emulator. At least not for me anyway. Uh, so, but this is the only ga uh, game I have downloaded at the moment. Uh, may sometimes when you download a PlayStation emulator, it'll be in two types of files. It'll be in a there'll be two files the same name. One will be a dot bin. One will be dot something else, like C something, I'm not sure, but make sure it's the dot bin file that you use, that is the important one, but you can copy both of the files over 
onto your removable disc anyway. So copying the game over. This may take a little while. Pause. Okay, we're almost done now. So just remember that the, your games or ROMs also have to be in the same folder. They also have to be in the root. Sorry, they have to be in the root of your external device. Uh, the same as the emulator, and it has to be in the same external on the same external device as the emulator as well. I think. Uh, so make sure you do that. Uh, this will make the emulator run as stable as it can possibly be, which isn't that good to be honest. It still needs a lot of work, the PlayStation one, but the Nintendo 64 one works perfectly. Uh, just to say, when you download an extra uh, a Nintendo 64 ROM, uh, it will be in a Z. 64 file dot z64 file and uh, yeah you just put that on the root of your device just like I'm doing with the dot bin files from the PlayStation emulator. Uh, you can't have two emulators on at the same time unless you use that one that combines both but I don't recommend that. So you know if I wanted the Nintendo 64 one I'd have to delete everything here and copy the Nintendo 64 one over instead. Uh, so to start the emulator all you have to do is plug in your USB device which has all this stuff on it into your JTAG or RGH. Start the console up by hitting the eject button. That will boot the console into Zell or Zell Reloaded. Uh, depending whether you have like JTAG or RGH. And just leave it. Do not sync your controller until the emulator has started up because uh, it can kind of interfere with Zell a little bit, had it happened before. But uh, yeah, you just wait for it to load the emulator and once you've done that you just go on the emulator. I think you have to use the D-pad to scroll along the different options on the emulator. I don't think the, the sticks work, you have to use the D-pad. But once you're actually in the game you'll, you'll be able to use this, all the buttons as they should be used. And uh, yeah, that's basically it to be honest, there isn't a lot to say. I also wouldn't recommend launching Zell from an XEX, I would, because that for some reason doesn't tend to work for me at all to boot the emulator up, so please use uh, the emulator by booting Zell from the eject button when you boot the console up, uh, rather than an XEX launched from XEX menu or freestyle dash, because that doesn't tend to work as good. So honestly that's really it to be honest, there's not much else to say, uh, just enjoy your games. Also emulators can cause your CPU to heat up a lot more than usual. Not stuff like SNES emulators but these kind of emulators do, so I'd recommend having your fan speed up quite high, especially if you have a Xenon or something like that. But uh, yeah anyway I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial, it wasn't as quick as I was hoping it would be but still hope I didn't bore you guys to death and uh, yeah please if you find this information useful then give it a like rating subscribe I really do appreciate you guys who have subscribed to my channel and uh, yeah I uh, hope you tune into my next video